Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I want to talk about Lambda architecture. What is it and why we have been using it? If you're new to my channel, I'm Rhys Ang and I make videos about data engineering, cloud, and Microsoft Azure. Consider subscribing to my channel and also press that like button if you do. What is Lambda architecture? It is a design pattern for big data processing. This processing pattern is able to handle two kinds of data, which is batch and streams. Batch being a bigger volume, slower frequency, and typically structured type of data, like relational data in database systems. Streams means it's a smaller volume, uh, real-time processing or real-time uh, speed, and also generally less structured or unstructured type of data. Could be logs or it could be anything but relational, typically. Now, to illustrate to you what this architecture looks like, let's head to the slide. Let me show you what Lambda architecture looks like. Now we have, like I said, two kinds of data, batch data and stream data. So batch data typically nowadays is like relational data in database, where stream data could be logs, telemetry, IoT device uh, data, and so on and so forth. With batch data, we have to have a separate processing for batch processing here. And traditionally, this could be a Hadoop MapReduce uh, with HDFS, and in today's world, it could be a um, data factory as well as a data lake, for instance. Whereas stream data, you will have a different processing engine here, and this could be an Azure function combined with stream analytics, or if it's an AWS, it could be AWS Lambda combined with Amazon uh, AWS Kinesis. For example, now with Lambda architecture, both the both batch and stream processing eventually come to a layer for a serving layer. And this serving layer could be anything. And I will dive deep, deeper in the next slide. Let's dive deeper now. With this architecture, I'm just going to break it down even further into four different steps here. So we've got data sources, store compute, store model, and serve. With data sources, we have batch and stream data. For the store compute for the batch data, we have this batch processor, which combines uh, some sort of ETL orchestration. This could be data factory or TCP cloud composer. We have a Spark here as a compute uh, for the batch data to process the batch data with Spark engine. We obviously have the storage itself, which is a data lake storage. Now for stream data, we have a stream processor, which combines a routing, which is a mechanism to take the data from the source into the stream engine and the stream engine itself. And this could be um, Azure Stream Analytics or maybe GCP Dataflow. For the routing, it could be Azure Function or even Grid. And this data from stream processor can be ingested or can be stored into the data lake storage for historical analysis, for example. Now from here, we have the store and the model layer where the batch data and the stream pros stream data after processing can be stored and modeled into various different stores like relational database store, NoSQL, data warehouse. And for the modeling, it could be in a, some sort of machine learning maybe Studio or containerized uh, compute engine like Kubernetes. And finally, we will serve them into a layer, which could be a business intelligence uh, layer, a web application, a mobile, and potentially maybe uh, some sort of data science uh, front end. And overlaying all of the above, this would be, there will be some sort of security and monitoring uh, tools in place. This could be Active Directory, Key Vault for secret management, and also maybe log analytics and application insights for the monitoring and alerting 
Finally, we've got some sort of data governance, overlay all of these resources and in Azure, it could be Azure Purview. And for AWS could be AWS Glue Data Catalog, just to give you some examples there. What is the benefit and drawback for this architecture? The benefits are quite clear. So it is flexible to handle both uh, batch data and stream data. And from compute perspective, because it's uh, that flexibility, it's actually also scale quite well. And whether that is scale vertically or for scaling up, uh, meaning you basically increase your compute or your uh, virtual machine spec, your CPU, your RAM up or horizontal, where uh, which is basically you adding more uh, nodes or, or clusters into your your compute engines so that you can run more jobs in parallel. And finally, it's technology agnostic. Obviously, this is an architecture. So you can actually uh, mix and match this with many different technologies out there. Just one drawback here, it's just a bit complex to manage this so many different uh, pipelines and resources because of different this different processing within batch and streams. If you want to make sure the data is consistent and high quality, you basically have to manage a lot of pipelines to deal with. So it's just complex to manage that. That's it for today's video about Lambda architecture. I hope you get some takeaways from this and learn something new. If you have any questions, as always, just drop them in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel or like that blue button if you do enjoy it. Let me know if you don't or have any questions. I'm happy to help out. That's it for today. I'm out.